projectile motion. consider the trajectory of a basketball as shown. If we will draw an xy axis where the origin is at the initial location of the basketball, it will look like this. Neglecting the effects of air resistance and allow only the force of gravity to affect the motion of the basketball, its trajectory will follow the green broken line as shown. The basketball's initial velocity is v naught, represented by the purple arrow, and the angle between the initial velocity and the positive x-axis is theta. Furthermore, the components of the initial velocity are v naught cosine theta for x shown as the orange arrow and v naught sine theta for y represented by the bluish arrow now in this trajectory the highest point is at p shown here as the red dot and the farthest point where the basketball finally falls to the positive x-axis is at S, represented by the blue dot. From this figure, we will derive expressions that will describe the motion of the projectile. Here are the equations of constantly accelerated motion in one dimension. These equations will be helpful in our derivation of expressions to determine the time that the ball is above the positive x-axis, the location of the highest point and the farthest point, and so on. Going back to our figure, the equations of constantly accelerated motion in one dimension are also shown together with the value of g equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Direction of g in this illustration is downward, and by convention, it must be negative. At time t equals zero, the initial position of the basketball is at x naught equals zero and y naught equals zero. Consequently, the x component of the initial velocity is v naught x equal to v naught cosine theta, and the y component is v naught y equals v naught sine theta. Using equation 3, highlighted in the upper right corner, will give us y sub t equals v naught sine theta t minus one-half g t squared. And going back to equation 1, highlighted in the upper right corner, will give us x sub t equals v naught cosine theta t. Solving for t will yield t equals x sub t over v naught cosine theta. We will now substitute this expression of t to equation 3 to give us the equation y equals tangent theta 
x minus one half g x squared over quantity v naught cosine theta squared. If we will look at the equation closely, we will observe that it is actually an equation of a parabola, which is the shape of the projectile's trajectory. At what time does the basketball come to a halt to its highest point? From the figure, we can analyze that at point P, the velocity must be zero since the basketball stopped. From equation 4, which states that the final velocity v sub yt is equal to v naught y plus a sub y t. And knowing that v sub y t is equal to zero at the highest point, v naught sine theta minus g t now is equal to zero, where t in here is the time to reach point P. Rearranging and rewriting T as T sub P is equal to V naught sine theta over G. The next question would be, what is the highest point above the positive x-axis? If we go back to equation 3 and substitute the expression of T sub P, we will have y sub tp equals the maximum height h, which is equal to the quantity v naught squared sine squared theta over 2g. Here are some remarks regarding our derived equation. Number one, if the initial velocity is increased, the maximum height follows. Number two, if the angle theta is increased, the maximum height also increases. And lastly, if the experiment is done on the moon, the object will go much higher. Now, at what time will the basketball be at point S when it goes back to the positive x-axis? Again, we will use equation 3 and equate it to zero. If we will denote t sub 1 as the time from point O to point P and t2 the time from point P to point S, we will eventually conclude that t1 must be equal to t2 since a parabola is symmetric. Therefore, t sub S must be equal to 2 t sub p, which is equal to 2 v naught sine theta over g. Remarks Number 1. If we increase the initial velocity, there will be a longer time to reach point S. Number 2. If we increase the angle of theta, there will be a longer time to reach point S. And number three, if we will do the experiment on the moon, we will compute a longer time to reach point S. So, how long is the distance OS? From equation one, we will determine the distance X sub OS, which is equal to V naught cosine theta times T sub S, where t sub s is equal to 2 v naught sine theta over g. Substituting the expression of t sub s to find x sub os, we have x sub os equals 2 v naught squared cosine theta sine theta over g. In this equation, we have a double angle and if we use the identity, x sub os can be simplified to v naught squared sine 2 theta over g. Here is an illustration of a projectile motion where a basketball 
is thrown upwards at an angle theta equal to 90 degrees. Recall that the equation in solving the maximum height h is equal to v naught squared sine squared theta over 2g. But we know that sine squared 90 degrees is equal to 1, leaving us with the expression of h equal to v naught squared over 2g. Now, if h is 2 meters, what will be the initial velocity at theta equals 90 degrees? If we include errors in our measurements, estimate the value of the initial velocity at 90 degrees. This will be assigned as your exercise. Include in your exercise if the angle theta is 45 degrees, also 30 degrees, and 60 degrees. Here is the typical plot for the three angles included in your exercise. Here is another example of projectile motion taken from the book University Physics by Young and Friedman. A monkey escapes from the zoo and climbs a tree. After failing to entice the monkey down, the zookeeper fires a tranquilizer dart directly at the monkey. The monkey lets go at the instant the dart leaves the gun. Show that the dart will always hit the monkey provided that the dart reaches the monkey before he hits the ground and runs away. Here is the figure of the tranquilizer dart that's supposed to hit the falling monkey. We will now start with what we know. We have two bodies in projectile motion, the dart and the monkey. They have different initial positions and initial velocities. But they go into projectile motion at the same time t equals zero. We'll first use our equation one to find an expression for the time t when the x coordinates x dart and x monkey are equal. Then we'll use that expression in our equation three to see whether y dart and y monkey are also equal at this time. If they are the dart hits the monkey. The monkey drops straight down. Thus, x monkey is equal to d at all times. And from equation 1, x dart is equal to v naught cosine alpha naught t. Solving for t when the x coordinates are equal gives us d equals v naught cosine alpha naught t. So t is equal to d over v naught cosine alpha naught. We must now show that y monkey is equal to y dart at this time t. The monkey is in one dimensional free fall so its position in the x-axis is the same. The monkey's initial height above the dart gun's muzzle is y monkey naught equals d tangent alpha naught. Thus, we have y monkey equals d tangent alpha naught minus one half gt squared. From equation three, y dart is equal to v naught sine alpha naught t minus one half gt squared. Comparing these two equations, we have y monkey equals y dart. If d tangent alpha naught is equal to v naught sine alpha naught t at the time t, 
when the two x coordinates are equal. To show that this happens, we replace t with d over v naught cosine alpha naught, the time when x monkey is equal to x dart. Sure enough, we find that v naught sine alpha naught t is equal to v naught sine alpha naught d over v naught cosine alpha naught which is equal to d tangent alpha naught. Here is another illustration to show where the negative one half gt squared is.